Hello everyone, Jason here from septictank.co.uk and today, excuse me, I'm going to ask, answer your questions. So let me just, uh, oh, I'll have my little third coffee of the day. Mm. Oh man, oh man, that's nice. Wow, really, let's rock and roll. So let's get straight into this then. Hello and uh, good to see you all. Thank you for joining me on this live broadcast. So let's have a look at your questions here. Okay, so Ian. Ian is asking, when does the septic tank ban actually come into force? Okay, well, I will write it and I will tell you. It actually comes into force on the 1st of Jan, 2020 that's when it actually becomes legal and uh, they will then start you know going from house to house checking what septic tanks we've got and what conditions we've got in okay so i hope that answered your question okay sally hello sally <clears throat> okay that's a very good question sally so what worms do you use and uh, why don't they drown well that's an amazing question that is Sally <laughs> very good question now you know every chef has a secret ingredient so I'm not going to tell you the Latin name for these worms but I will tell you something about them right in in the UK there's a hundred and fifty species different species of worms okay 150 different species of worms uh, one of those species is earthworms another species is is kind of like aquatic worms there's loads of different ones right but the particular worms that I breed personally are sewage worms right now that's not their actual name that's what they do right they actually eat poop, right? Human poop, um, animal poop, and they break down carcasses on the forest floor. And when I used to live in Shropshire, they used to naturally incur, occur there in my dad's septic tanks and in the neighbours. And I found out what worms they were. And um, we have them bred. Actually, have them bred. So, uh, so sorry, Sally, for not revealing my. Um, secret ingredient but that's as close as an answer you're going to get as to the species of worms that we use in our dog poop septic tank and in our worms that we send out for normal septic tanks you also asked why don't they drown that's a very good question all right so it's a fallacy that worms actually drown it's not true they Obviously, they can drown, but generally, in normal conditions, they won't drown. So what are normal conditions? Well, let's say that is um, a river or a stream or um, a watercourse. It could even be a tank, right? But with a river or a watercourse, there's a flow. You know, the water flows down. There's a, you know, if it rains, the water will flow to someone else. A river, brooks usually flow. A, a body of water is like a pond, okay, something like that. So where the water flows, there's a constant supply of oxygen. So where there's oxygen present, the worms will not drown, okay? Now, if you've got a stagnant puddle, right, if you've got a stagnant puddle, so just a stagnant puddle in the road, that's been there for three or four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days, or you've got a stagnant pond that pong, pongs, and it's 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 it, nothing's alive in there. You know, all the plants are dying. There's no fish alive in there. Then there's a good chance in those situations the worms will actually die. Yeah, true. Now in a septic tank, it's the same. You've got an inlet pipe that comes into the septic tank, 
and you've got an outlet pipe. So there's a constant flow of water. So we have a bath, we lift the plug up, the bath water goes down the pipes and into the septic tank. It then leaves the septic tank and goes into a soak away. So there's a flow in and there's a flow out. So, and that flow oxygenates the body of water. So that's why, um, Sally, worms don't drown. And so I hope that's answered your question. Um, <laughs> but look, I love answering questions, you know. I love answering questions because there's lots of rumors going around, doing the rounds, things like that. And um, all right, so that's good. Thanks, Sally, for that question. Uh, Brian is asking, how do the worms break dog poop down? That's a very good question. <clears throat> all right, so let me – so. Let's say that's a, some dog poop, right? Let's say let's just call that some poop, all right, for argument's sake, okay? Now I'm going to draw a big picture of a worm. Okay, so there you go. That's a smiley worm. Now, <laughs> the worms that I breed are not that big, right? They're not that big. That's just like an artist's impression. But... I'm showing you how worms actually break the poop down in septic tanks and the dog poop septic tanks. All right, so that's the worm. And uh, let's say that's the poop. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the poop all the way to the worm's mouth. There we go. So that's the poop. All right, so the worm will actually munch and chew on the poop. Now, that could be a dead carcass, it could be anything. But there's a miraculous process that actually <clears throat> happens almost like a metamorphosis. As the worm eats the poop, the poop is digested, right? It travels along its intestines and it's actually transformed broken down and literally there's like a, a molecular transformation from the toxic material so here look it's toxic right it's toxic and we know it's smelly right toxic and smelly but once it's been through the worm right it actually removes all those toxins right so as it travels down its body it removes the toxins and the harmful um, chemicals and, and, and bacteria and stuff in there. And the worms actually poop out. They actually poop out organic liquid. compost <clears throat> it's kind of the things like worm casts right worm casts and worm poop is the richest form of fertilizer and compost in the world there's nothing like it it's rich right rich in nutrients and minerals it's amazing. So that's how the worms break down um, dead bodies, dog poop. Their digestive system is able to just convert horrible toxic material into rich, safe. So let's put that there. Safe, clean, organic liquid compost right that's rich in nutrients and minerals and you put that right so in the dog poop septic tank for example all this um, organic li liquid compost actually builds up in a, in a sump inside and you can actually take that and put it on your garden and i kid you not right your garden will suddenly grow and become like the garden of eden it's amazing so that's how the worms actually work and break things down. So thank you very much for that question there. 
There we go. Okay, so just forgive me a minute. I'm going to have a pause from talking. I'm just going to dry this off and then <clears throat> I'm going to have a nice sip or drink of my coffee for a minute. Mm. Mm. But thank you very much for your lovely questions there. Okay, so loads of questions. Let's have a look here. Let's have a look. Let's pick another one. What are septic tanks normally made of? Very good question. Okay, so. <clears throat> Daniel. Okay, Daniel. What are sept septic tanks normally made of? Well, the onion septic tanks, which look something like that, they're made from <clears throat> fiberglass. They're made from fiberglass. Now, now, the pros are fiberglass is light, okay? <laughs> you see, it, well, it is in small sheets. It's very light, but a massive onion is not light, right? So, but it's cheap to make, okay? So fiberglass... They use fiberglass because it's cheap to make. And so they're cheap to buy. The downside with the onion tanks is you only have to knock them, bang, just a little bit. And if you've been punctures them and puts a hole in them and they're ruined, you've got to replace your tank. Or you can get a fiberglass patch to put on there. But, um, oh, man, there's no guarantee that that patch will work. Now, fiberglass septic tanks are cheap to buy, but when you come to put them in the ground, because they're so light, <clears throat> if it rains, right, let's say it rains, right, and a bit of water gets down here, then the tank will actually lift up and pop up. Out of the ground, it, it's, I kid you not. Many, many septic tank installers have gone to the site in the morning and found, wow, it's like <laughs> it's like a rocket. It's just sprung up out of the ground and it's just sitting there. It's almost like freaky. <clears throat> and so they're cheap to buy. And the reason I'm telling you that is because to stop them popping out the ground, you've actually got to backfill them with concrete. So whilst you can save two to 300 quid initially, up front, they'll cost you about 1,000, 1,500 quid more to install. So it's just a free tip there to, um, to save you getting, if you're on a budget, then, you know, if you're not wasting your money unnecessarily on installing it and using concrete, then that's another 1,500 quid you can put towards something else. Maybe even treat the wife. So onion tanks <clears throat> are made from fiberglass. Now, <clears throat> there's another type of tank on the market. I call them bullet tanks because they look like a bullet, okay? So we call those bullet tanks. Now, these tanks are made from rotor-molded plastic. And... Um, <sighs> the actual molds that make these are like they're the size of houses. I'm not kidding. They're the size of houses. Excuse me a sec. Oh, I needed that. <clears throat> I really needed that. So these molds are the size of, size of houses, but the plastic that they use, it's like injection molded and... Although they're, they're heavy duty, they're quite light tanks, right? They're quite light. I would say almost as light as the big onion tanks, but this kind of bullet shape, this kind of ribbed design, that's why we call them bullet tanks, <clears throat> almost makes them indestructible. You can literally drop them off a third story building onto the floor and they'll just bounce. So, yes, they, couple, couple, they cost a couple hundred quid more than the onion tanks to buy, but 
excuse me for coughing, but <clears throat> I've got like a frog in my throat today. You can hear it. So anyway, so the, they cost a couple of hundred quid more to buy, but you don't need to concrete them in. You can just backfill. with some gravel or shingle. And so you haven't got to spend that 800 or 1,000 quid to install them. So that's what um, typically septic tanks today are made of. And I may as well add this last one, although they're rarer, a lot rarer, you can still, right, Get septic tanks that are made from concrete. Now, they're the best. They're the most expensive, but, man, they're like nuclear bunkers, right? So they're never going to pop out the ground. You could fire like a ballistic missile at these things and the missile would just bounce off them. So concrete tanks are the best. They can't be beaten. People generally stay away from them because they're expensive and they're heavy and they normally come, the modern ones normally come in two sections. And you have a big crane and they take them off the low loader and they put one down. They're like Milton rings, but they're not Milton rings. And then they just slot together. So um, there's a lot of benefits. As I said, it's heavy. It's indestructible. And, um, yeah, there's never any problems with a concrete tank. But you pay for what you get. So I hope that's helped. There are the three different uh, materials used on septic tanks. So I hope that helped Daniel on that one. <clears throat> okay, so what else have we got question-wise? What time do I get up in the morning? <laughs> what time do I get up in the morning? Well, that's a very, very good question. I get up at half past five every morning. Now, it's not something I've always done because I'm normally a night owl. Normally like going to bed, I don't know, half 11, half 12, half one, half two. But this is something really bizarre, right? Just consider this. I normally used to get up about eight o'clock, up of state, roll out of bed, eat some breakfast, then go to work, right? And start my working day, that's what I mean. But, so you imagine this, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Nine, nine, nine. So I work nine to five. Nine to five, nine to five, nine to five, right? So <clears throat> typically, there's probably later than that, but if I say nine to five, right? So that is, so that's seven hours a day. And, um, you know, I'd get what I had to do done in those days, and there's always a lot more to do that I couldn't get done. But this is what I found. By getting up at half past five every morning, half six, half seven, half eight, it gave me another three and a half hours. Now, watch this, right? This is nuts now. This is nuts. Three and a half. And look, you're probably better at maths than I am. So it only took me, like, most of my life to work this out. 7, 14, uh, that's right, isn't it? 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and a half. So that equals 17 and a half hours. What's my point, right? Because we're supposed to be talking about septic tanks here. Well, my point is, right, <clears throat> for me, that was almost, that equaled almost another two and a half days of work. So obviously I go to bed early, went to bed early, get to go to bed about half 10 now. But the point I'm making is, by getting up at half past five in the morning, 
It increased my productivity by two and a half days of work, more a week. And if you're working for someone else on a nine to five and you're in an office or a factory doing something you don't like to do, then obviously you don't want to get up early. But if you're self-employed and you want to get stuff done, I heartily recommend getting up earlier. I mean, because look, you're almost fitting a seven day week into five. So anyway, so I probably digress a bit there, but you did ask, oops, sorry. You did ask what time I get up. Uh, I get up at half past five every morning and that's why I do. Uh, I know it's somewhat related to the septic tank business, but it means that, um, <clears throat> you know, I can make more septic tanks <laughs> or help more people. All right, so what else have we got here? What is the legal certification for septic tanks and sewage treatment plants? Okay, that's a very good question. Um, Charlotte, is it? Okay. All right, Charlotte. So a septic tank... must have two forms of um, a certification to be legally compliant in this country. It must have a CE mark. I think it's like that, isn't it? A CE mark. And it also must have an EN12566-1 <clears throat> certificate. So those... <clears throat> Sorry, as I said, oh, I've got to, well, there's hay fever or whatever. I don't know, but the rapeseed started coming up, and I think I've got hay fever. So you'll have to forgive me for co coughing constantly. It does my head in too. Right. Okay. So look. So in this country, a septic tank. Never buy a septic tank if it doesn't have a C mark, or they can't give you a C mark E mark for it, or the N two E N one two five six six dash one. They're basically government certificates, right? They're like an MOT certificate or a tax certificate or something like that. You know, I'm just giving you a comparison there. So they're required, legally required, legally required by um, the government. All right. So for a sewage treatment plant, for a sewage treatment plant, it's very similar. But the slight difference is this. So, again, it needs a C mark. Looks like a pound sign, but I can't remember whether the E is just a, an E or looks like a euro. But anyway, doesn't matter. So a C mark, and it needs the EN12566-3 certificate. All right. So those are the certificates that are required for a sewage treatment plant. So they're required by the UK government too. Uh, that basically means that it's been tested so it can go into a water course. That's basically been tested that the um, septic tank will uh, do what it has to do, i.e. separate the solids and the liquids and, and stuff like that. So there you go. So we're almost... Uh, it's a little bit longer today, my questions and answers, because people are saying, well, you don't answer, answer, answer my question or blah, 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 which, and I'm really sorry. If I miss, miss any of your questions, I'm really sorry. It's just, it's just time, time. You probably know what I mean. There's not enough time to do everything, but I'm really sorry if I don't answer all of your questions. It's nothing personal, it's just, um, Oh, if you can see how many questions I've got here. All right, so let's answer one more <clears throat> question. Um, well, I may answer a couple more. Let me answer this one. How often should I get my septic tank emptied? Well, if your septic tank's working fine and it's working normally, then you just need to get your septic tank emptied once a year. Uh, an empty costs £200 a time. Many people get it done uh, twice a year, every six months. 
<clears throat> and it typically co costs them 400 quid a time to do so. And that's fine. When they're when you're getting your septic tank emptied, you're not emptying it because of the water in there. It's all a septic tank's always full up with water, uh, about three quarters full. You're emptying your tank because you're sucking out all the sludge and the fat and the grease. So you've that's answered your question, I know. So you get them once a year or twice a year. That that's the legal minimum, all right? That's the min. Min, <laughs> minimum, there you go. Minimum. Mum? Oh, man. Do you know what? It's been a long day. Minimum. That's a new word, way to spell minimum. <laughs> minimum. Wow, okay. Okay, so, but I'm just going to give you a little tip here. It's not a sales pitch or anything like that. If you want to legally avoid having to spend two to 400 quid a year, get yourself a bucket of soak away worms get yourself a bucket of soak away worms uh, from my site septic tank uk the pen is running out but the point being is that's not a sales pitch because those worms you just literally tip them in your septic tank and they will save you right kid you not they will save you two to four hundred quid minimum a year so bucket of soak away worms are a one-off treatment you just tip them in they eat all the fat and the grease and the sludge, so you never, ever have to get your tank emptied again. Right, I'm going to do one more question, and then I'm going to call it a day, because it's been a long, 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 long day. But I wish I could answer your questions all day. I really do. I really, really do. All right, so one more question. You speak about your dog poop septic tanks. What size? I've got two dogs. What size do I need? Well, okay, that's a very good question. So typically then, typically I do two sizes of dog poop septic tanks. So if I just give you a rough, All right, so that, the typically, I suppose that's the difference in size, right? Now, this is called the large. That's large, and that's extra large. <clears throat> and this will typically, the large one will do one to three dogs. One to three dogs. So what kind of dogs will they do? Well, Springer Spaniels, Labradors, Poodles, stuff like that, you know. And this one will do three to five dogs. So, so that's typically, um, the, you know, um, the number of dogs that we, they do. I mean, if you've got small dogs like a Terrier or a Jack Russell or something, then, you know, in reality, I will probably do five up to five Jack Russells and that'll do up to ten Jack Russells. So it does depend on the size of the poop and the quantity of the poop going in. I mean, it's as simple as that. But that is a, you know, a tip, if you want a typical approximation, there you go. A one to three and three to five. and. Um, yeah so there you go so i hope that's helped and um uh, i was just going to say something else oh yes sorry i was going to tell you this as well but let's say you're a dog pound a comp yeah um or or um you've got a kennel club and you've got or a rescue dog rescue center then we do do a bigger one right I've probably gone off this no i haven't gone off the screen okay that's good so, and this is called the cube dog poop. Septic tank, okay? And I suppose it's called a cube because it's shaped like a cube, but, but this is really amazing. And the cube, right, the cube tank will do, and get this, so my pens run out. 
Okay, so this will do anywhere from one to a hundred dogs. It's amazing. And it's very, very popular with the kennel clubs, as I said, and places like that, places where they've got lots of dogs in, in runs and uh, stuff like that. So you just scoop the poop up, you can just scoop the poop up and put it in. It's not designed for all the wash down, you know, all the gravel, all the grit. Um, you can put some hairs, dog hairs in there, but you wouldn't want to put Jay's fluid in there, okay? So you wouldn't want to put Jay's fluid or stuff like that. Just put dog poop in there. That's as simple as that. And those worms will break down that dog poop and make it, oh, man, turn it into odorless, organic, clean liquid fertilizer. So there you go. So I hope that's helped today. As I said, I, I really appreciate all your questions, all your answers. Um, I'm sorry. I, there's loads of people asking you questions there. Um, please don't think I'm being rude or anything like that. But I really can't answer everyone's questions. So, look, this is why I do two to three live broadcasts a day so that um, I can try and answer all your questions. So, look, if in the interim um, you're interested in my products, let me just say this quickly. Again, it's not a sales pitch. I just want to just when I go offline in a minute, if you want to learn more about the dog poop septic tank, then just go to dog poop septic tank. Dot com. There you go, yeah. Or just go to septic tank. uk, and I've done tons of videos and stuff like that, like this, that you can access for free help and advice. So, dog poop septic tank is where you can learn all about the um, septic tanks, the dog poop uh, for dogs. The septic tank uk for well, I've got some dog poop septic tanks on there, but they're mainly domestic kind of, you know, tanks for humans. So listen, thank you very, very much for all your questions, for taking your time out to watch me, to pulling up with me. And um, you have a great evening, and I'll be back tomorrow <laughs> sometime in the morning, I don't know, 6, 7, 8. It's surprising how many people are up at 6 or 7 in the morning asking me questions, you know, on the broadcast. But look, I'm back tomorrow, right? Have a great evening, and I'll speak to you soon.